So thank you so much. Our panel discuss discussion will be in English. I hope everybody in this hall understand English well, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as I was introduced, okay, they're already starting to talk. Oh, it will be hard for me to manage all of this probably. Uh, so, as I was introduced, my name is Elena Lobova and I am a founder of Achievers Hub. We're helping talented independent developers get funded, secure partnerships and uh, bring their games to market successfully. But today I'm here as a moderator of a discussion panel about making global hits for global audiences in CIS countries, in Russia, Ukraine and Belarus. And uh, all of our panelists represent companies that are making these global hits. And uh, in fact, uh, they, these companies are making games that create, uh, making games that are played by hundreds of millions of players across over 150 and sometimes even 170 countries. Uh, so, they know everything about it. One of these companies is uh, entirely in CIS. One of these companies was founded in CIS, but now is international. And the third one uh, is, was not founded in CIS, but uh, it has a major development center here. Now, I will let the panelists introduce themselves. Please tell us what you do and uh, which games are created in Ukraine, Russia and Belarus. Uh, let's start with Oleg. Yeah. So my name is Oleg Yavorsky. I represent a company called Vostok Games. I'm one of the founders of the company. Uh, our studio is an independent uh, games developer. We, our specialty is uh, developing shooters primarily, like first person shooters, uh, third person shooters. Um, so, uh, for the last uh, few years, our main game has been uh, Savarium, which has been our first uh, free-to-play kind of experience. Before that, uh, we worked, uh, our, this, the, the team was uh, part of the GSC game world, and uh, we were part of uh, the Stalker franchise. So, um, yeah, that's probably it. Thank you. Mm. Check, check, check. Uh, hey, my name is Andrei Bilatsky. I'm creative director for World of Tanks PC, uh, based in Minsk. Uh, Probably everybody knows what game I'm talking about. We are building it not only in Minsk, but also in Kiev, in Graz, in Austria, and uh, Czech Republic as well. And uh, definitely using some outsourcing all, all over the world. Uh, before Wargaming, I was working at Ubisoft Montreal and remarkably did uh, uh, AC4, Black Flag, and AC3. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Nicholas Day. I'm a creative director at Plarium. Uh, we're headquartered in Israel, but most of our development studios are in Ukraine, and uh, we have one in Russia as well. Um, we specialize in free-to-play social browser and mobile games, um, now mostly mobile. And uh, most of the games that have been made in Ukraine that have been really successful with us have been strategy games. We also do casual and match three and a bunch of other stuff which we can't talk about. <laughs> OK. Uh, okay. My name is Max uh, Yermenko. Uh, I am basically Nicholas Evil Twin. Uh, I am a creative director as well, and we are working together in Plarium Kharkiv uh, on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we are in great company today. Awesome. Uh, so now let's move to the topic of our discussion. Before this panel, I did a small survey. I asked my 30 friends from 18 different companies from the industry to name a few uh, world-known kits created in Russia, Ukraine or Belarus. Almost a third of them couldn't name any game. And uh, keep in mind, these are the guys from the industry, so they should know the companies and uh, the global audience. Uh, more than half of them named one or two games and mainly it was Metro, Stalker, and World of Tanks. And uh, only seven people out of 30 could name more three and more games created in CIS. I know that the representation is not that big, but in general, it represents uh, the whole picture. And uh, on the other hand, all of my friends in the industry, and not only them, admit that we have in our countries a lot of talented developers. So we have capacities. 
Moreover, we have a lot of talented outsourcing teams that are working on the world-known hits, like, for example, War Thunder, Simpsons, uh, Star Wars. This is all under the NDA, by the way, so if anybody asks, like, I didn't tell you anything. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I'm, 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 actually, I'm actually kidding because I didn't know, the, the, didn't, didn't mention the name of the studios and well, everybody knows, like, who cares about NDA? Uh, I never told anybody that I told this. Uh, so, why that happening that having such a great talent, we don't release uh, global hits every year. What do you think? <laughs> Walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's the end. <laughs> to me, that's probably like a, there are two sides uh, of the problem. So uh, first of all, uh, too many of us are doing outsourcing. So normally this means that the company specializes on really just one field, like coding or maybe artwork. Uh, and that's probably it. Uh, so there is really, uh, uh, on one hand, a problem of having a full-fledged, like full-capacity uh, teams that can create the product from start to to the end. Uh, so that's one pro part of the problem, uh, and another part of the problem is just money. I think because uh, these days, you know, creating blockbusters costs millions and millions of dollars, and uh, usually it's uh, uh, it's tough money to find, especially somewhere in Ukraine. But uh, I, I don't uh, say it's impossible. So, um, um, yeah, maybe, uh, but that probably the, the next part of the discussion of how we move forward from there, but maybe about the reasons, maybe other guys can have their own opinion. So, uh, you think that it's, uh, on one hand it's a recruitment problem, so you can't find uh, people with uh, like full stack capacities? Uh, yes, because uh, there is just, uh, first of all, there's lack of experience. I mean, uh, in, in some of the areas we're really strong. I mean, coding is something uh, Ukraine can be proud of because uh, there are so many, uh, you know, uh, companies from around the, the globe come here just to outsource. First of all, because it's cheaper and secondly, because there's so many of coders who can do good job. And uh, that's, that's our strong side for sure. But. Uh, uh, having you know experienced uh, producers, story writers, uh, you know st even animators, uh, directors, so all, all these guys that are also required game design. Uh, so all, all these people are also uh, required to create like you know a proper uh, game when we're talking about like full development. So yeah. um, management, uh, producing, you know, uh, I I still think there are some gaps in in these fields. Okay, thank you. I would like to add a little bit to what Oleg said. Uh, first, I think it's not money, it's more about investors, because we have lots, uh, or th this, this country in particular had a loss of non-profile investors that were just, just dudes who, who want to put on some money and make some money back, and these guys are extremely um, scared Goodbye. about making risky investments, and anything new and so potentially popular is risk investment per, 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 per definition. So our investors are trying to avoid making such in investments. They're trying to put money on clones. Sorry, but clones do not make global games. Uh, secondly, uh, about talent, I, I think it's, it's a sort of a mindset issue because there is a client-oriented mindset that is built, being developed by outsourcing, and there is a product-oriented mindset that is definitely not. So working with people who are uh, who had a very long track record in outsourcing companies is particularly hard because they value different things and it's visible very well on both coding despite the quality of a code could be super good uh, or especially in design uh, and touching the, no, uh, the last part of my my monologue here will be uh, touching design in particular we are quite strong in everything that uh, has to, something to do with applied math so technical design, pretty good. Systems design, quite okay. Uh, player experience, or so-called 3C camera control character design, horrific. <laughs> okay. <coughs> what do you think, Nikolas? Um, you know, I, I think it, it, it's partially not true. Um, and I, I think it, it, it is changing, like especially, you know, our, our field is more in like social games and, and mobile games. And what you're seeing with mobile game development is the barrier to entry is somewhat lower. 
you know, you don't need as much infrastructure investment. You don't need th this massive machines that are driving the product and these, these super long three-year development cycles. Um, if you have Unity and if you have a computer and if you have a very small team, you can make a very successful game that makes a crap load of money. Um, if you look at uh, Pixonic with War Robots, you know, if you look at, um, uh, they're here somewhere, Gardenscapes, you know, the, these games are, are outperforming uh, on global markets um, with, with relatively low amounts of investment behind them. Um, so, it, you know, I, I think when you're talking about what is a global hit, you know, these games are very financially successful, but, it, you know, if you're looking, you know, also more on like the triple AAA, AAA side, um, it does come back to the money and the investment thing because it's marketing. Like so much of the money that we spend on, on games is, is, is pushing those games out there and getting visibility. And if you don't have access to that for some of these titles, you know, it doesn't matter how good your game is if you can't actually get it to market. You know? so. Okay. So uh, do you mean that we lack some marketing expertise? It's not. No. Again, like there are very good marketers, and there's really good, you know, performance marketing and product marketing, and you know, and especially in Ukraine in the last couple of years, you're seeing it. It's becoming like a thing, yeah. you know, and it's really developing quickly. Um, but again, hundreds of millions of dollars for pay-per-click advertising. <laughs> um, you need well, it needs true. to come from somewhere, and and the acquisition costs are going up and up and up and up and now. Like even the big established guys, if you're paying fourteen, sixteen, seventeen dollars per new user. <laughs> Um, that's tough without somebody with a big bank account, you know, right? Or many somebodies, preferably. Yeah. <laughs> True that. Uh, okay, uh, I'm thinking that it's not about the talented people or not even about uh, investments because right now we have some money in industry, we have some investors, and really we have a lot of talented people. But it's more about infra infrastructure, like what well, what the it's the most important thing. Uh, most people uh, doesn't count. Uh, I started in industry in 2010, uh, and basically, the TIS industry died in 2008. Like the, uh, that industry that made uh, big games for PC and consoles. I started in the new industries that were making games for the social networks, for mobile platforms, and we had uh, we had a long way ahead of us and we are still uh, developing but uh, I think right now uh, CIS industry uh, recorrected in some way but it's still really small to build your own Witcher 3 or world known AAA hits every right, year yeah. you need a lot a lot a lot of uh, additional resources connected to the development it's not enough to have a team of talented people who has money to develop game. You need uh, professional conferences, you need B2B events, you need uh, access to dev kits, which, which is really hard to get in Russia or Ukraine, like to get a dev kit for PS or Xbox, whatever. Uh, you need uh, direct connections with all of the publishers like Steam, and it's really hard and we don't have that. And it's still way ahead. Um, we have started with a small and really simple flash games in Plarium. Uh, right now we are doing a game with uh, motion capture animations, like on a daily basis. It's Shh, don't tell them. No, <laughs> I will. We are already doing that stuff. We are using that motion capture for good. Uh, <laughs> and we, also, we also already have to force everybody in this audience to sign an NDA before they leave the room. <laughs> uh, and uh, pr probably in a, in a five years, in a ten years, we will get there. But it's, uh, it's a long way. Okay, can yeah. Can Do you one? want to add? Yeah, yeah. sure, of course. <coughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I mean, uh, first we will talk about the topic in general, and then we'll have some time for the audience to ask questions. This topic pains me a lot. Uh, That's awesome. That's fantastic. In the end of the, the panel, you will have no, 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 no. Let's let let. Can can you make can you make a note? Just don't no. forget it. Oh yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and and also just just another thing like yeah. you know to acknowledge. Like if you're looking at the game industry start like like you know in the in the U.S. and in Europe and stuff, you've got like 30 years 
head start. You know, you have old game dudes who have been doing right, this since yeah. like 1981, um, which is a resource. That's a thing. You know, they 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 did it because they you know, they started working on consoles, and you you have the Silicon Valley where oh we've been doing systems and server architecture and all this other stuff for you know 30 40 years. That there's no way to kind of really ignore that advantage. You know, you have more of these people lying around. Right, right. You know. Good. Uh, so uh, you mean we we lack infrastructure. That's true. We lack expertise, that's true. And we lack funding in many ways, of course, also. Uh, but we also touched the mentality question. Andre talked about the outsourcing mindset versus product mindset. But what about the mindset in our countries in general? Do you think that there are any differences between players in CIS and other countries? And also, are there any differences between developers in CIS and the other countries? Yeah, of course. Uh, <clears throat> from my perspective, there are a few, few slices of, to that problem. The first one is uh, Assessing the complexity, what is not or uh, what is perceived complex or what per perceived not complex, it's very different across many countries. Uh, the second one, uh, part, uh, to, to, like you know, when we are talking global games, things that we are thinking of are mainly built uh, around United States of America, maybe Canada, like we are thinking GTA 5, right, or right, I know, yeah. Call of Duty series, uh, and worst case scenario like Battlefield, Sweden. The tr trick here is, <laughs> trick here is, it's it's all about uh, product market fit, and it's absolutely easier, like a uh, hundred times easier, to fit onto your own home market because you are not dealing with all these strange problems of psychology or interpreting of information on informational architecture of your own stuff. So, for example, I I, I was doing that uh, talk in Minsk uh, a few months ago. I showed a few screenshots of pretty successful Korean games on a Korean market. From artistic, like visual presentation standpoint, or UI standpoint, UX standpoint, they, they look mad. Right, it's it's yeah. crazy mass of colors and, 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 and letters. It is, I, I, I'm not sure that it's physically possible to, to uh, bend your mind so hard to be able to produce a game that is successful on a particular Korean market, unless you hit it uh, accidentally. It, it, like, it is possible, yes, to, 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 to shoot and hit accidentally. Blizzard didn't try to make StarCraft for, uh, for Southern Korea. It just happened. But, uh, so mentality is a really big problem, and this is uh, what making uh, the old the, the discussion very, very hot, that we are dealing with a market that is rather small financially, that, is, uh, that has a very unique culture uh, that, uh, brought by existence of the Soviet Union. Uh, and we, with our game, we are dealing with that quite a lot. It's, it's a very linear dependency from the distance from Moscow to the West and the popularity of World of Tanks. Like it's it's very very visible numerically. You can you can check it yourself. So uh, yeah, there, there is a psychological barrier. And uh, having guys like Nicholas uh, working with uh, our local studios or other guys like I know French guys, um, um, Dutch guys, uh, British guys, uh, et cetera, et cetera, is supposedly will help us to to to, to build it correctly. However, it's still it's, it's I don't think how many I don't even know how many years ahead we need to pass in order to say oh you know what our mentality is exactly like in France. <laughs> Right, so yeah, Nicholas, uh, th so this is logical question for you. How easy for you it was to communicate and work with the developers from Eastern Europe and especially from CIS countries? Uh, honestly, um, you know, f f first, first of what you said, you know, it, it is funny. It's like, I am the token American guy. I am responsible for understanding all of the people yeah, of North America. Like in this, this is what Americans in this room, like. You are. And, it's, and it's hard because like after six years, you're like, what do you think Americans will think? I'm like, I don't know. I've lived in Ukraine <laughs> for six years. I have no idea what they like, you know. <laughs> Pass the borscht. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> um, yeah, when, when I came to this country, like, actually communication was, I mean, I started talking to him remotely. I was working in the U.S., so we're talking on Skype, and I'm seeing his badly translated copy that he's written in Russian and storylines into English, 
And I'm arguing with the localizers. I'm like, that's not what he's trying to say. He's referencing this <laughs> sci-fi novel from like 1973, you know, which I love. And no, 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 you're messing this one up. He's actually, you know, he's been inspired by this. One. Can I just talk to him? I'm like, yeah. And so we go through. And 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 a lot of, I think, especially with game culture. Um, one, I remember when I came to this country and I realized that all of your memes are exactly the same. They're just in Russian. <laughs> They're the same thing. I'm like, we have that meme. They're like, no, we invented that. I'm like, no, we have, we have that too. Um, so a lot of the communication, when I came, not many people spoke English, um, but enough people spoke English and, and everybody grew up saying, playing the same games that the references were the same. Right, yeah. So if somebody says, blah, 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 UI. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that. You know, no, it's a, it, it's a c c nuclear explosion. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I get that. Cool. You know. um, and then, like over over the years, like everybody's English has sort of gotten better around me, while my Russian has just sort of just gone away. But it, it's not that challenging. And and the thing is, most most of the people, like if you picked up our studio and all the people in it, and covered in tattoos and twenty two year old kids with mohawks and skateboards and stuff, and if you picked them up and you dropped them in the Mission District in San Francisco, nobody would really notice until they talked. Um, so it's not that different, you know. There are cultural gulfs, but it doesn't make it impossible to work. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody wants to add? Can I, can I disagree just for a second? It's, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yep. Probably until one of those guys will try to buy us juice squeezer, and and then <laughs> operate it without even opening the manual. <laughs> this is exactly what our people are doing. They are not reading manuals. They are not reading at all. They are assessing complexity in a very uh, forward way, Straight like forward. I will make it through. I will yeah. eat this cactus Before till the end. This, don't care. <laughs> so yeah, this is a part of the mentality. Uh, anybody else wants to add something? Maybe s what do you think is helping us, or uh, on the other hand, is somehow uh, like preventing us from creating global hits? Well, uh, yeah, I would like to add, uh, to actually agree to Andre's point about uh, uh, cultural differences. Uh, there really are, um, and uh, you know, uh, I've been an, like an old school developer, so we've always been trying to change, you know, the publisher's attitude towards us when we, when we were going to like trade shows uh, uh, in Europe and uh, in like E3 uh, in, uh, in LA and uh, they always treated like us like third world. So, uh, but things are changing, I, I agree. Uh, but generally, I, I think our cultural mindset uh, it is different. I mean, it's closer to, to a bit to European, more or less, but in terms of like North America, we are too far, and Asia is a totally different world. Uh, that's why it's really challenging to, to make like a global hit, especially when designed uh, here, like from beginning. Uh, you can always distinguish uh, uh, the games that have been made in CIS because all, all of them, they look gray. You know, the the color palette is, is like gray, it's, everything is gloomy and dark, it's just been uh, traditionally so because of the background, I, I think. And <laughs> open the yeah. window. You open the window and you see it. Uh, <laughs> but well, yeah, yeah, well have a look at the Scandinavian and Nordic game, they have the same like uh, around. But no, uh, it, it's not always that, but not only that, but also the the the, the Soviet Union background and all that, because all yeah, these you know gray walls, the, the, the lots right. of concrete, etc. So that's why you know Stalker was so much popular around here because it was like the first game uh, about all these gloomy you know uh, surroundings and uh, all, all, all these walls and buildings and and everything in ruins. So. Um, we even had, I remember, you know, uh, when we worked with, uh, like, we did a strategy game, uh, Alexander, you, you didn't remember. So we had a guy, uh, so it was published by Ubisoft, so we had a guy who, who was an artist and he was sent to us for like three or, or six months and he was sitting with us changing the whole color palette of, of the whole, you know, maps because uh, they just didn't look attractive to, to their taste. So that's, uh, that's when I, you know, I realized that there <laughs> definitely is cultural difference. So, um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not saying that uh, we cannot learn to, to make it more appealing to, to, like, to the Western um, you know, audience. We just need more, you know, uh, maybe, uh, you know, it changing through time. We need, uh, you know, to get better understanding by playing more of uh, uh, Western, like, designed games, etc. So, and traveling, uh, this helps. I mean, um, but Asia is something so, uh, I mean, 
uh, the best games that are popular there, the best sellers, the hits, uh, they, they are not selling any, anywhere else, I think, uh, even this much. So uh, this really means that, uh, you know, uh, creating a, like a, a game with a global appeal is, is probably like extremely tough. Uh, I don't even know, you know, a single game, maybe StarCraft, PUBG. Yeah. No, no one was uh, trying to sell it to China, right? Uh, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Okay. 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 Uh, so accept. Ex yeah. Do you want to add? Yeah. There was one yeah. thing, you know, because about me, it was just like Nick. What was your experience? Who cares? Um, <laughs> so, uh, and we talked about this last night. Like uh, again, like player behavior. You know, when 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 I came to Plarium, we we, were, we already had like one strategy game that was re released on the Russian market and the CIS market, and um, that was on the Kontaktia and on the Klasniki, and um, and others. And you know, if if you're the, the the way that game had to succeed on the market, you're, lo you're looking, especially in free-to-play, if you're depending on a couple players with enough money to support the game, the, the, you know, all, all free-to-play games like, kind of depend on whales. But in Russia, I mean, you've got like 80 guys with all the money, and it's all theirs. And if they don't spend it in the game, um, you know, th so they have sort of this, this, this much, much more higher, like skewed influence over the game development because we have to get those guys happy and we have to make them spending. We're not spreading around it as much as we would in like the Western market or in, in Europe where it's, you know, if we get like $2 from 10 million people, we're fine. I, I, I need to get $2 million from this one guy. Um, so over time, you know, as we went west, that, that, that influenced our development. And also, you know, like you were saying with the mentality in, in terms of like CIS players, like in, in the way you broke it down for me, like they won't read the manual. We had a lot of you know UIs or features that we had introduced that are ungodly complicated. They're really hard. They're you know some of them were just designed poorly, and the Russian players would be like, ah, a challenge. You know, <laughs> like I will go and figure out how you did this and reverse engineer all of your mechanics, like because I can do it. And if you show that to like a North American player, we're like, oh, that's hard. I give up. I'll play a different game. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that has a real impact on development over time. You know. Okay, and accept uh, trying to understand different mentalities. What do you think should we learn to create more global hits? Uh, like, and which expertise should we gain? Uh, uh, that's an interesting question because our first game was Total Domination. The strategy Nicholas told about it was sci-fi, post-apocalypse. Ap apocalyptic something something with biopunk elements and it was even it was hard even in Russian to understand <laughs> and uh, more games we made and we together with Nicholas we made like 14 games I think like yeah and we were working on the scripts we were working on the setting, uh, sound design, voiceovers, uh, and game mechanics. Uh, we learned to make uh, more appealing and general settings. That is, I think, most important thing. Don't make, uh, uh, don't make a game too hard. Like, Stalker is a good example, yes. Like, it has this post-Sovietish apocalyptic wipe, uh, and that's why people love it. And probably uh, Metro is playing around the same theme, but uh, it's a rare case. Try to make something more more general. Our most su successful game, Stormfall, for example. Well, Vikings, but before that, Stormfall. Stormfall was a, cl a classical high fantasy. And we played on the, all the strings, like all of the fantasy lovers around the world uh, would understand. And that's uh, why that game was a huge hit and Total Domination was just a first try, for example. Well, it did pretty well, but Stormfall did like much, much better. Um, and, you're, and talking about your question, like, you know, where do you go from from here? I mean, it, it is it, it is possible. I remember, like, you know, our, our big competitor on Facebook was like Kixai. We're like, someday we will make a fraction of what Kixai does, and then we will also be cool. And then, you know, and then we actually started our games, which are produced here in Ukraine uh, and in Russia. We're outperforming them, and we're, like in their own market. And that's it's like it's it's not impossible. And like in in, right. in, in AAA, there's all these different. You know, game dev is a big place, and especially in like mobile, especially in social, um, it can be anybody's game. Uh, Content does make it hard, depending on what you're doing. Like, you know, we worked on a prison game, and they're, and they're like, yeah, we'll sell this in America, and you know, people will play it. I'm like, this looks like a scary Soviet cholera prison. That's not what our prison looks like. 
I'm like, really? I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't know what that is. Is that what they look like? They're like, yeah, that's horrible, you know. Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so interesting. Actually, the question is, what should we learn to make more global hits? To, to, and, to yeah. fail. We should learn to fail. Awesome, yeah. Uh, this is a... Uh, like, uh, come good. on, you, 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 I did. did it. You probably did. Those guys probably did. The, 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 the trick here is we, we have this kind of uh, school based fear of failure, of uh, getting social stigma, of getting put it into a dog house of, in Russian, <laughs> uh, like, oh my god, if I will do that, everybody will laugh on me. No fucking way. If, if, if you will not try to do to, 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 or experiment and be brave enough to do that, there is no fucking way you will succeed even as, uh, accidentally. If you will succeed accidentally, then you learn something and you can, might try to reflect and try to, to figure out what, what's going on and what, what, why, why it's happened. And uh, the second part, uh, learn not to build recipes. It's a very tempting, especially for a well-organized technical mind, to, th to think about things as about recipes or blueprints. I know how to make, I know, uh, vehicle-based shooters. No, I don't. I know how to, 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 to build World of Tanks. Uh, or I know how to build you know, uh, third-person action adventure games uh, in historical settings. No, I don't. I built two games. Okay, fine. I, 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 w I will not guarantee that I will build a third one. But it, it's, it's so cool to think, oh my god, I know, I know how to... Anecdote Factory works in Far, Far Cry 3. Unfortunately, I, I don't believe so. I believe that the moment someone says, I know the recipe, you, might, you, you need to turn around and run away, from, uh, independent of the location, from Los Angeles or from Kiev. Um, just to add to, to, to those points, so I, I also think that uh, being able to create like a global hit also means to be able to uh, really uh, neatly define the, the, the right niche and try to predict uh, which particular you know niche uh, will still be unoccupied by the time that when you deliver your game because um, it usually takes you know even several years to uh, to to build you know a, a large enough game and that's why you uh, you really have to follow the market uh, but uh, many studios usually try to jump to jump on the bandwagon that is popular today but by the time they deliver Nobody is uh, no longer interested in, in their game because uh, the time has passed and uh, the, the quality of what they delivered uh, is really not enough to, to even compete. So, um, uh, and another point is also the, the, the quality of, of what you do uh, because as I know, also talking to like fellow developers, like uh, especially this is something pe peculiar for for those who just start. So they want to create a game that will beat uh, every other game in the market, trying to combine all of their ideas into mm -hmm. into their yeah. own right. uh, best game of all the time. So they would, you know, try to combine Stalker, World of Tanks, and uh, maybe. I don't know, World of Warcraft into uh, one single game and try to deliver it all, but this will never work because, uh, uh, of course. <laughs> with zombie. Uh, with some possibility to travel to space, but uh, uh, this will just never work because uh, usually, well, first of all, they don't have the experience to deliver uh, such caliber of games, and secondly, there's just, they don't, just don't have enough money to, to do that. Uh, but paying attention to the quality of what you deliver, I think, is very crucial. Uh, so, uh, um, what differs, you know, like a B title to uh, something bigger, like A or triple A uh, title, even uh, is the quality of the polish. So, the, uh, how much time you spend to testing, how much time you, you pay attention to really small detail just to polish it before you release, because. Uh, it's always been our common problem, so uh, we would release too soon, too buggy, and that's why, you know, uh, the, uh, but the first experience really matters. So uh, the players take a look at your game and then they just go and they never return. So uh, you, don't, you won't have another chance, so you better pay attention and uh, release a quality product. Okay, thank you. Okay. Even smaller. Max, yeah, do you want to add something? Uh, about quality and... Uh, recognition. Uh, we worked on the game called Soldier Sync. It's a game about private military companies fighting each other in some African country. And we had a lot of uh, 
military corporations inside that game, and each corporation were dedicated to some country. And we did a lot of research. And if you want to make something that will be appealing to the Western players or Asian players, okay, you can't bend your mind like that, but still you need to spend like a lot of time like watching movies, reading books, like gathering references. Basically for the each corporation we gather it uh, like, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of the pictures and we try to reproduce uh, military technique and equipment with uh, like small, smallest details, like the, even the belts were original. And we, when we have launched this game on the Facebook, uh, we had a, a lot of players who were actually... 20% US combat veterans. Yeah, combat veterans from US, from, from, from France, like people who served or people who, were, uh, who are serving by the moment. And there, we, we felt their, their gratitude because they told us like, guys, you made this like real, I can see this stuff. We also got in trouble with the U.S. military. Yeah, tell that story. Oh, yeah. this helps. Do we, do we have time for like a quick anecdote, real uh, quick? Yeah, we do. So we're doing all this research, and we're trying to make all the weapons as authentic as possible. So we're like, we want to use the actual model for the helicopter, and they're like, well, how do we do that? I'll call Boeing. I'll call the company. I'm like, hi, I'm calling from Ukraine. We're trying to get the rights to this attack helicopter. Sir, are you trying to import attack helicopters to Ukraine? No, 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 it's, it's, it's for a video game, it's click. You know, and uh, we did this with all the weapons and everything else, and I, and I, w I got a call from the Pentagon uh, War Materials Acquisitions Office. Um, and my brother was in the US military at this time, uh, and I was ex-military, and they're like, uh, Mr. Day, we'd like to know exactly what you're doing in Ukraine. Um, the U U.S. has a standard policy of non-participation. I'm like, oh God, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's all not real. It's, and we had this fake promotional website for one of our PMC companies, and it was like Excelia Battlefield Systems, and it was like deliberately shitty. Like the website was bad, just like these defense companies. Um, and we got invited to Libya for the arms conference right before the war happened, because they thought it was a real company. And we're like, no, it's just, yeah, all right, yeah, we'll go, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, blending reality. You need to go deep. Yeah, go deep, do your research. If you're making a prison game, go to prison. Um, or hire somebody else to do it, you know. Okay, awesome. Uh, so we have definitely a lot of challenges. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of things we, can, we still have to learn. But do you think that the situation is changing now? And uh, what do you see around and uh, why do you think it is changing and what should we do more of what brings us closer to be the hub of uh, world known hits? Yeah. You know, er, earlier you earlier mentioned, you know, when, when you're going to Western producers or publishers or whatever, they treat you like a third world country. Um, I think now, and again, like our, you know, looking at mobile especially, um, because there are these global platforms and because the, the, they, they understand now like, oh shit, there's a lot of money in the rest of the world, you know, and, and, and that's where it's coming from. It doesn't really matter as much, like if you're working with Apple or if you're working with Google for distribution, uh, if you have a good game and, and if like, especially now with like their editorial system, if they look at it and it's a good game done at high quality, it doesn't matter what country you're from as much anymore. Um, so that gives a big leg, leg up, you know, with distribution, you know, you can make a global product, you can get it out there, you can get it exposed. Um, yeah, I, and I think it is changing now, like anybody who has a little bit of money and has Facebook's ins insights can go find out about their target market from Ukraine. You can go and do the research, it's available, um, you know, if you're doing your homework, you have, you have access to the exact same information than some dude in the US or Paris does. It's, you know, amazing, you couldn't do that 10 years ago, couldn't do it five years ago. Um, so the tools are getting better, the barrier, barriers of entry are getting lower, and, and also, you know, specifically U Ukraine, as, you know, as it's changing, foreign businesses are getting less scared. They're like, oh, this might be a safer place to actually invest real money. Um, you know, it's, uh, you can definitely go only upward, I think. Yeah, I agree. So generally, um, I think every publisher, when trying to make a deal with a the developer, they always, you know, evaluate different risks. 
uh, and therefore uh, just the fact that the studio is located I in Ukraine could could be a risk already but uh, things are changing so <laughs> I guess uh, the more you know studios the more outsourcing is being done here so the, the safer they believe it is in to invest I into local uh, studios um, but we heard um, we had cases when you know a publisher forced the studio to relocate but uh, you know that's also possible but generally I think um, uh, it's really uh, rather more important to to have something delivered, even a small game, uh, but a good quality game, to become noticed or at least to introduce yourself well to a publisher. So these days, uh, you know, the market is so huge uh, that uh, you know the publishers they need content, uh, different types of content, A games, triple A games, B games. So um, you just uh, you really need to to be you know self. Uh, self-sustained and to be able to, to properly deliver in quality and to have publisher really trust you that you can uh, deliver what you're saying. Um, and now, you know, you have a possibility to travel, you, you can, uh, we have all these conferences, you know, it really helps to boost the, the industry. Uh, and um, we are, we have definitely become more open to like to the Western world, uh, and uh, you know pe companies from the West they they notice that and they understand it now. And Kiev is already a hub; it's it's more a hub of outsourcing, but we can you know change it to be a hub of you know proper uh, game development, uh, a local like uh, hub companies. for, for yeah. to be a European you know center for game development. Uh, and right now, we uh, our main advantage, well, frankly, is uh, the price tag. So uh, publishers also count money. So uh, we can offer them, you know, cheaper production, and uh, they they like it too. So uh, we have the advantage. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think Nicholas told about game and culture, and uh, I think game and culture by four minute mm, help helps Ukraine helps uh, all the CIS sector a lot because it's, it creates a universal language for developers to talk with players and to, for players to understand what what what, what was told uh, and I sincerely believe that we are tracing the same path like Poland and Czech Republic already did with 2k for example or with uh, uh, with your series so I, I think it's 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 a question of time. Ten ten years ago or, or fifteen years ago, I started. I think it, in two thousand three, it was a very different landscape, and this this discussion was simply impossible to to, to hold it. What would be perceived crazy? I mean, you know, the, so what I was going to say. I mean, shit. If Poland can do it, right? <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> and and again, if you, if you told me like you know in the U.S., I remember when I, when I was growing up in like the late '90s, like people thought Poland. Oh God, it's all, it's often the barbarous, <laughs> you know, like there be dragons. Um, <laughs> and you go there now, and I'm, I'm talking to people like, dude, I can't wait to move to Krakow, and maybe CD Projekt Red will hire me. Oh God, they're the greatest game company. And I mean that that was unthinkable like 15 years ago, you know, even or, or, or 20 years ago. So like part part of it is you know concerted effort and investment on their part, but there's no reason that couldn't happen here. And um, you know, and there is there. There's so much talent in this country, and it's not just developers and coders. You're talking to like game design and project leads who all have like development backgrounds. You also have a shit ton of really good 3D and 2D artists and animators. Like you have world, you have guys from this country who are getting hired by ILM, by Industrial Light and Magic, by top VFX companies. Like you, you have a huge pool of talent here. So um, yeah, it's it'll come together. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is changing is that uh, we are learning to do uh, again more appealing settings because if you will look as, at uh, Gardenscape and War Robots mentioned, uh, Gardenscape is a really bright game that playing around really understandable themes for everyone everywhere. Like even for Asia, they can understand that story because it's a story about the family and rebuilding. Same with the War Robots. War Robots is a bright game about robots shooting each other simple, everyone can understand. And uh, right now, I think what is changing is the mentality like of, of everyone in the industry. We're, uh, we're learning their ways and we are sometimes doing better than them. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, now I think we have some time for several questions from the audience. Yeah, I know that there is at least one. Yeah, I remember. And uh, uh, this is the last panel for today. We decided to celebrate it. So we have a small gift for first four questions and one gift for the best question. 
So don't lose your chance. And uh, can you help us with the mic? OK. Help myself? Oh, yeah. Please, introduce yourself. Sure thing. Um, uh, my name is Kachkov Evgeny. I'm franchise producer, company Crytek, uh, Warface. Okay, uh, so I'm in the, the team. Um, um, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for this uh, interesting discussion. And um, I will have one note about what you should not do uh, to create a um, uh, high quality Western blockbuster. You should not, uh, how to say, um, over design any particular aspect. For example, like making tons of different animations of bullet jamming in the barrel and then extracting it back. Instead of that, design the game, the game loop, minute to minute, stuff like this. And the question, um, what is your approach to uh, finding the critical um, art lead resources like art direction, like senior UI UX designers, because in Ukraine you have tons of uh, high quality workforce, like developers, artists, but we lack the uh, seniority in this uh, leadership, art direction. Uh, uh, we are struggling to find a very good UI UX designer to create a decent architecture of UI. This is the question. What is your approach? Okay. Can you bring us the mic back? <laughs> Let me do this for you. Uh, it's a challenge for, for us as well. I mean, it's a common problem. Uh, like, yeah, we're really having senior people, not only like art and UI designers, but also just like even producers and uh, management, etc. Uh, so uh, the best way we we found it to, to do is just to grow them. I mean, <laughs> we 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 yeah we really try to get you know uh, young talented guys, but um, having at least uh, like a talent and a good art director is a must have, of course. So uh, and he can help you know uh, grow the, the the younger guys, and that's that's the way we did it. So, but yeah, it's it's a challenge. Uh, the only thing I could add, we are using for that international talent pool, so we are trying to hire a big. So, for example, for the art direction, we got Michael Cahill, who mm -hmm. was an art director behind uh, Mad Max Fury Road. So he's a Oscar guy, and uh, he is helping a lot in, in that particular domain. The same goes with UX. So b basically get some well-known uh, international expertise and try to utilize it in order to train your people. That's it. Uh, amongst other things, I am responsible for employer branding in Plarium Kharkiv. And uh, we are not trying only to grow them, we are trying to build a community uh, of the people who will learn from each other. Um, launching some events, launching some online platforms, uh, like inviting people to talk with each other. So, uh, years after years, uh, we can see a result now. Like because uh, if we are starting from our side and our gaming is starting from their side and someone starting from some other side, you can build an industry where uh, those experts will grow by themselves. Awesome, awesome. Everybody, if everybody starts from him, himself or herself, yeah, it brings the industry to the new level. You can also hire really expensive consultants and then <laughs> steal all their information. Yeah, yeah. This is also one of the options, right? Yeah. So if, if, if you're in a hurry, you know. <laughs> okay, you can get your small <laughs> present. Uh, we have more questions, please. Uh, Teras, yeah, you, you, okay. you were second okay. one. Introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Teras. Thank you for your great discussion. And uh, most of you, sorry, Nicholas, have our common mentality. And what you make on your daily routine to break a mentality loop, to break this mind change, chains, and to start um, think, be more, be more open-minded to create cool games. Thank you. It's your present, please. 
Well, well, uh, again, probably because uh, we are considered a ridiculously rich company, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can uh, afford ourselves to send uh, people to other places for a prolonged period of time, so for three, six months, in order to wait, uh, work somewhere else. So we have a studio in Chicago doing uh, console tanks. We have a studio in Seattle doing something else. We have uh, war game in Shanghai. We have uh, and other entities all around the world. So basically, if we want to try to to reach someone or teach someone to break that kind of mentality, we have places where these people could go and work alongside with other cultures. We also bring in lots of people to Minsk, for example, as it's still our main production uh, powerhouse, uh, to uh, work together with our, with, with our local people. So, for example, a platform head in Minsk right now is an American guy as well. Uh, we have development director for World of Tanks, he's a Czech guy, Milos Jezabek. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of semi-broken person because I lived more seven years in Canada, so I, I, I got this wound. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm not exactly local, no, nor exactly Canadian, obviously, as well. So uh, bringing in, we had uh, at some point on World of Tanks, we had Activision X VP of shooters working with us uh, together. So it, 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 it's uh, something that like previous success allows you to, 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 to practice, but generally I, I can't imagine other way, like force, forcing people like in a political or economical situations that is forcing our people to go elsewhere to work in, I know, CD Projekt or to work in um, uh, Ubisoft Massive or to work in DICE or whatever else is helping a lot because generally, from, or from my experience, we do return. It's, it's very rare when a person, except it's a kid maybe, when a person goes forever and never returns back. Okay, yeah. Let's try to keep our answers short because we don't have enough time, but we have to give away our presents. Of course. Um, so, uh, yeah, but uh, if your company does not have a possibility to, you know, do international experience sharing, so uh, uh, you really learn a lot when working for, with a publisher. First of all, because you do the daily communication, they explain you what they like, what they dislike. So you learn from from that, uh, and y y it also really helps when you uh, you know have a possibility just to to travel to t trade shows and conferences around the globe uh, and just immerse into the local community, just see how people you know uh, talk to them, just get more cultural you know understanding and background and. When I started in the industry, which was like in early 2000s, uh, there was no internet. But now, you, you know, you had, you, you have so many possibilities to do, like to watch videos, so you know, to about to have, read websites about games, the industry, etc. So this, you have all every single resource, you know, books, whatever. It's just everything you have. Yeah. Also, and and I mean. I'm over, I don't really count, apparently. I'm from a country where, where I'm already open-minded. I don't know. Um, no, I, I, but I, you know, when, when you're trying to find, because I had the same challenge here, being based in Ukraine and, and trying to find out how to do stuff and, and how are things done at other com companies. Like one, um, you know, e even in email communications, you know, like if you're doing like an IP or something where you have another publisher, you like, you will find out very quickly like what the standards are and what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Um, also, like you said, you know, developers love talking about what they do. You know, and most of them are really gracious with their time. You know, I, I've had problems where I go on like to a LinkedIn group. I'm like, I don't know how to do this. Help! And people have come up, and they will they will help. They will give you your time. You know, if you if you ask intelligent questions um, directly. So, you know, I email strangers all the time or stalk them on LinkedIn. I'm like, hey, what's up? I really like that game you made. It's so good. How did you monetize that? Um, <laughs> and people will tell you. It's amazing. Um, you know, especially at conferences after they've had a couple drinks. So, um, go yeah. go ask. You know. Go drink. And ask. <laughs> uh, if you don't have uh, much money or much time to travel and break your mentality in that way, uh, you can learn to do that stuff. Uh, I don't think you can actually uh, break your mentality living here, but you can uh, learn to shift in the different state of mind. Uh, as this, this is a personal question, and I will tell how 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 I'm doing this. Um, I'm not watching anything connected with the, our informational space. I'm trying to watch only things connected with the Western markets uh, and I'm using something called uh, personas. It's uh, from marketing when you're creating someone who is living somewhere and you're not making uh, some feature 
or idea for yourself, you are trying to make that feature for the person you create who lives somewhere there. And it helps you to uh, adapt, uh, to add a little details that will grab attention of the target audiences. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have time for a couple questions? Yeah, two questions. I see two hands. Okay. Okay, uh, let's have two questions, but not everybody should reply, please. Um, yeah, it's so talking. cool. I, I believe that we could talk about it for a couple hour, couple more hours, but unfortunately, we are limited. Yeah, I, right. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Uh, okay. You were talking about uh, our strong uh, programmers and uh, artists in Ukraine. Uh, but uh, how do you think if uh, we will try to create a full Ukrainian company, which uh, positions will be most weak? Um, I mean, will be designers or managers or PR guys? Uh, what's your opinion on this? Thank you. Did you understand the question? Yeah. OK, good. Um, I think probably management, um, you know, it, it, it is, it's really hard, like, and, and also, like, in Western companies, like, you know, 50 years of, like, you know, heavily capitalist, industrialized, optimized systems, like, this is how you make a team work and make a product really quickly and efficiently for the least amount of money in the least amount of time. And this is something that's kind of been, like, drilled down through organizations, through trial and error for much longer lead time than it, that's been over here. I mean, you've got, like, companies like General Electric that have been around for, like, 130 years, and they've been, they were having HR meetings in 1889, you know. Um, so I, I think there's like a stronger culture um, that that it, it, I, I'm also seeing that change like like now in the, like the last couple of years like at our, at our company there's been concerted management training like this is how you run a team um, one of the other problems that we have is you have technical specialists who are like I'm an uh, this guy is an amazing artist let's make him stop making art and put him in charge of four people <laughs> and he has no idea what he's doing and he's kind of an asshole. Um, and you've basically taken the most productive asset that you had and you put him in a role that he has no training and no background for that he doesn't like um, in charge of, of people who are not as good at him at what he was doing. Um, so I think that's something I see happen time and again. You know? And it happened to me. They're like, you're creative director now. Stop creative directing and, and, and manage a team of people. I'm like, okay. Three of them quit. One guy I fire. I'm, like, I'm terrible at this. Help. <laughs> um, and, and there's a learning curve. You know? So part of that's experience and, uh, and training and, and mindset. You know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's have one more question. Uh, I can talk really loud. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think it helps because we have a video recording here. And okay. yeah. Um, so um, my name is Inga. I'm Matchmate. I was talking yesterday, influencer platform Hi. based in Berlin. And I was working in with mobile games. Like um, I'm from Lithuania originally, so I kind of stand in between. So please don't be so sad. Like if it was. In US, this presentation would be how to make more blockbusters and the huge companies, because there are so many huge companies in Russia, Belarus, and, and Ukraine. I can name at least 15. And you know, instead of like naming like how what we do wrong, just say like what we should do, and like be more positive. And um, my question is more: Do you agree that it's just really, really hard to find um, to find developers in these countries, like because they are just waiting to be found? Because if you go to Pocket Gamer Connect or or like even like Casual Connect, there are just not so many developers coming from uh, from the countries like presenting, and they are like mainly focusing on like events in, in Russian. Um, do you think that would help from both sides? Okay. Like, we'll t thanks actually for the note. We'll try to be not that sad. But I, after, after this answer, I will also do a follow-up and let's try to figure out what to do to make more global hits. But before, please. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not sure I, I got the question fully right, but uh, what I get is, well, uh, the, there are you know, a lot of uh, talented studios around here, uh, that's for sure, uh, indie development and etc. So usually why they don't participate in international events is probably just because, uh, first of all, uh, they speak uh, bad English. Uh, secondly, they don't have money to travel. So uh, um, maybe we should, yeah, just 
tell them more about the value of, of being there. So uh, we, let's promote, you know, <laughs> be positive. But uh, th they will come. I'm, I'm sure there, there will be more coming. So. Does this answer your question <laughs> or no? Okay, so, so it's, uh, it's more like not not like a question, but like like, like an advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what? Our behavior is a very good sampling of what we were referring probably all of us as about Eastern European mindset. So let's bitch about something. It's, this is very 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 local, and I think Nicholas just got that flu caught. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, let's 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 choose the best question. Okay, whom did you like? <laughs> yeah, but we don't have as much presence. You you could bring more actually. <laughs> Not my fault. We have decided that the gentleman over there who asked about the hardest position to fill in a studio is the winner of the Best Question Award. Okay. Although we'd like to thank all of our questioners for their amazing submissions. <laughs> awesome. The Best Question Award. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so just, I think that our time is over, but just to sum up what we're, we were talking about today. First, thanks to everybody, to our amazing panelists, to our awesome audience for your questions and your attention. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, there are not that many world-known hits on, right now in CIS countries, but uh, we have a lot of capacities. We had, have talented developers, and the situation is slightly changing. What we can do more, I made some notes during the discu discussion learn from Western colleagues, work with Western publishers and try to understand their mentality, their mindset, uh, develop infrastructure and get more expertise in the areas we are weak. For example, also I can advise to participate in some learning courses like Games Academy and so on. Uh, and when you're doing your game, define a niche. Don't try to do the best of the best of all games ever. Uh, know your player, know your audience, learn more about different countries, mentalities. Hire people from around the world if you can afford it. And uh, don't afraid to fail, but at the same time, don't release too soon. <laughs> so try, try to find a golden middle. Yeah, so it's a challenge, a challenge task, but we can accomplish this. And I wish you all luck and inspiration. Let's create more global hits together here in CIS. Thank you so much. <laughs>